What's up, party animals? My name is Kezi, and today I wanted to talk about music. But first, I want to give a quick update. Since I've been looking for work up here, I had an opportunity, and gross mismanagement dropped me out of a contract. And since I thought I was going to have money, I'm now short a lot of money. So uh, help me out as much as you can. Thanks so much. Moving on. I wanted to talk about synth tubers, and this can actually be a pretty big topic, especially in this late stage capitalism and YouTube as a whole. When you go as a new musician and you start looking up new musical things, such as, you know, all, all sorts of stuff that you can find, you can fall into this trap of these synthesizer reviewers or even guitarists or just all sorts of different softwares, hardwares, instruments, this, that, and the other thing, and it, and it can become completely overwhelming for new musicians. You start falling into this trap of these synth tubers being like, buy this, buy that, I'm gonna review this, I'm gonna review that, here's why this is great, here's why this is not, here's what you should buy, this company gave me a bunch of free stuff to review, wow! And so you get sucked into this consumerist mindset where you start to feel that that you're that you are being held back by your equipment that your abilities are being stifled by the lack of having a certain thing because when you don't have x y or z feature that means you need it because all the great people all the all the youtubers you watch have that feature and this can be an extremely difficult problem to both notice and overcome I had this problem for quite some time, and to some extent, I still do. I have synthesizers, and they are not necessary. Now, this isn't a video only saying, hey, don't buy gear, you don't need it to be good. I'm saying, don't buy gear because it will make you bad. And that's an easy trap to get into. I spent many years because I had, you know, uh, uh, I had a stable job, and I had a source of income. And I just, I just had extra money to spend on synthesizers. And so I went down this exploring path of hardware and, you know, a little bit of software because I thought, oh, well, I'm missing this. I'm missing this feature. I need it to be portable. I need it to be versatile. I need it to be this, that. And, and all of these things came down to I wasn't pushing myself past the limitations of my technology. Like I was showing in a previous video, you can make music with an $8 toy and a copy of Audacity, which is free. And so, and then you look at the greatest musicians of all time, uh, a prime example I have is Porter Robinson and their album Worlds. That whole album was made on FL Studio and a laptop and basic headphones not anything more advanced. They didn't have in a crazy studio. They didn't have top of the line studio monitors. They didn't have a full piano. They didn't have all of these things. They just had a computer and a passion. And I think that that, that is where you get the best music to be made, is when you overcome the limitations of, of what you have. You know, not everything has to be tactile. Not everything has to be, um, you know, perfect when you're working in, in like hardware spaces. And there's definitely something to be said about enjoying one method of doing something over the other. I think overall, passion will override any piece of hardware you could possibly buy. But you don't want to let go of like, you know, fun. If you're not having fun, that's that defeats the purpose. And so I'm not going to discount, you know, all these people with massive synthesizer setups that, you know, spend hours exploring sounds in their own little world. But you'll notice that these people have so many different devices to learn, they get overwhelmed. And so it, it ends up being this mentality of, you know, jack of all trades, master of none. And so when you have five, six, seven different pieces of equipment that all do different things or all do the same thing in different ways, you get stuck. And so your final product ends up being worse just because you're overcoming, just because you have to overcome your own limitations of knowledge. 
So, so one of the things that I ended up doing, especially when I was living out on the farm, is I gave up a lot of my synthesizers. I gave up a lot of my musical things. The only things I kept were a few basics. I have my CDJs right here, which was one of the first things I ever got because I needed, I, I want to be able to learn CDJs to play out. I kept some of the synthesizers because I do like that hands-on tactile fun. And so having a simple setup like this can allow me to have some jam sessions and just kind of chill out and explore sound. But I think then the main focus is sticking to Ableton and having stuff that, that does that. I used to have this like $500 Akai fancy fully featured keyboard, but now, uh, but now I have this like 150 or so dollar uh, Novation launch key, which has more keys and less overall features. It's not some crazy programmable thing. It's just a piano. It puts notes into the computer. And that's far better than some kind of advanced piece of tech where you can easily get overwhelmed and you, you, you'll you struggle to be able to make something that... that You'll, you'll struggle more when you have too many pieces of equipment that you have to learn and understand deeply to then finally get out and get to that workflow of making music. And so for the next few years for me, I'm going to be focusing on reducing the barriers that I have to what's in my head and the actual musical creation process. And the equipment that I have now is perfect. For my use case, I have a basic sampler, a little portable device, and a synthesizer. They're all super basic. They're not, <laughs> not really cheap, but they get out what I need, I need. And so spending the next, you know, three, four, five, you know, even 10 years learning these pieces of equipment, I can become a master of all of these. Instead of every, you know, every half a year, I get some fancy new piece of tech. I spend the time learning these, overcoming their limitations and overcoming my own limitations of knowledge as well. And I think that that, that is going to be what gets you from a hobbyist to a musician. And having that passion to learn your instruments, having that passion to just create and release music, I think is going to do far, far more than any singular or multiple pieces of equipment that you could buy outside of just the single tool to create something. And that's kind of what I wanted to say for the video is, you know, you'll look at all these videos of synth YouTubers buying new stuff and having tons of fun, but you'll find that when you're buying all these things, you'll spend more time learning, less time playing, and it starts to be less fun. And so I wanted to put that out there and say, hey, whatever you got is great. Use it, learn it, and enjoy it. And until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. Hey, what's up, party animals? I am at the end of the video, and I just wanted to say a bunch of bad things happened in my life. So uh, if you could donate on Patreon, help me out. That would be amazing. If you can't, just leave a comment, and that will boost engagement. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.